today on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The fabrication experts at Birds All Marine install a custom leaning post backrest on a classic 20-foot sea craft. We determine what backrest arm we're going to use for his application. Uh, now we're going to get this backrest installed. FS Boating Editor George Labonte joins Josh Whitaker aboard his tricked out 22-foot offshore. Josh's mechanical engineering background really came in handy when it came time to decide how he was going to lay out this offshore 22. The fiberglass masters at Wildfire Marine demonstrate properly repairing damaged gel coat. If you find a gel coat void, you need to get it replaced uh, because what's going to happen is once the gel coat pops out, there's no waterproof protection for the fiberglass. And the TRB Customs crew splashes their latest custom skiff project. From bow to stern, you can see that we have custom logos everywhere and our name, you know, just this is our, our design, this is our baby. And, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to have out here finally. All coming up on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District, home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over-the-top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Here today we're at Birdsall Marine. Uh, we have some backrest uh, arms, folding backrest arms for a customer uh, who's got a beautiful Seacraft 20 and he's uh, got a leaning post uh, with no backrest on it. So we're going to try and uh, pick the proper arm for Chris's uh, backrest today. His wife's been requesting one, and you know we obviously uh, got to accommodate everybody on the boat. So we're going to try and figure out what the best scenario is. So we've got a couple different arms. You can buy these uh, as a backrest kit. Uh, you know, different lengths, anywhere 29. Uh, 34, 43, 48, 60 inches. You can choose a width on there. If you'd like to measure the width of your seat and uh, choose the backrest that's going to accommodate it bestly there. This one is a, a pleated option. This is a white pleat. This backrest here is a smooth white. So Chris's scenario as being a custom uh, boat has a custom upholstery that we're doing there. And they're just about finished it up here in the upholstery department. Let's go take a look at uh, what they've got done for Chris today. All right, here we go. So now we're in the upholstery department here at Bird's Hall Marine. Uh, Alan here is finishing up the, uh, the custom backrest for the sea craft we have outside. Uh, here's some more of our awesome crew here at Bird's Hall. Now let's go see which uh, backrest arm is gonna be the best scenario to install in this boat here. All right, here we are. We're going to sea craft. We're going to try and determine what the best backrest arm is going to be for this uh, rocket launcher here. Uh, these rod holders, visually, I can see they're about a 10 degree angle on that. Um, a 10 degree rod holder uh, would commonly use, a, is going to be used in a snake arm. 15 degree would be a snake arm as well. I'm going to grab one and just test this and see how it is. All right, so. I'm gonna hold the backrest on to this one. Snake arm could work on this scenario. I'm gonna try another one just to let you see the, the variable. This is a hump arm. This one's gonna be for a 30 degree rod holder. So I know that this one's not gonna be the right scenario on this. That's not gonna do it for us on that one. We're gonna try a trapper arm on this scenario as well. That's a nice setup on this. The trapper arm's coming straight up out of this rod holder. That could be used also on, on that degree. That's gonna give us a nice height off of the cushion. You don't want it too high. You don't want it too low. So we've got a nice distance right there. I think this is gonna be the right scenario on this backrest here. So with Chris's backrest here, he was able to send us a sample of his upholstery. We matched his upholstery with the diamond stitch on here. It looks super nice. Uh, Chris should be really happy. We determined what backrest arm we're gonna use for his application. Uh, now we're gonna get this backrest installed. 
While they're doing the install of the cushion back there, uh, I noticed up here Chris uh, doesn't have a bow cushion. Uh, you mentioned he used to have one on here a while back, and his wife used to like hanging up here at the sandbar and relaxing. So I wanted to see the a uh, uh, couple different options for backrests. Now this is called a horizontal mount backrest. This one isn't really the best scenario. This would be used for a flats boat. Uh, if you got a flats boat, this would be a great setup for you there. This is a recessed pocket. This backrest goes into the pocket like this and would get cut into the deck and recessed down in the deck. Not what we want to do on this scenario either. So Birdsall has a vertical mount backrest that would mount to the bulkhead here and put a cushion on that. I think this would be a nice setup on the bow seating right here. I think that'd be pretty cool. So when I see Chris, I'm gonna recommend maybe he could surprise his wife with a, another extra feature on the boat here. So let's go see how the install of the leaning post cushion is coming. So we've completed the backrest install here. Got the right arms for Chris. He's gonna be ex extremely stoked on this one. Wife's gonna be happy. Uh, backrest arms are awesome on this thing. Folding. Here, he can stow it away when he's not using it. Uh, bring it back out. Line them up, back into the arms. So we've called Chris, he's on his way, coming to pick up the boat. Uh, he's gonna have a great weekend out on the water enjoying the new backrest. When we come back, George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Josh Whitaker aboard his tricked out 22 foot offshore. In this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Two Rivers Boatworks. Exceptional design, quality, and craftsmanship. At Two Rivers Boatworks, we turn dreams into reality, one boat at a time. Specializing in the installation of the industry's leading audio, electronics, and LED lighting systems to the custom design and fabrication of dash panels, foam decking, upholstery, and more. Our experienced technicians are certified to service Mercury, Yamaha, and Suzuki outboards. New Boat Envy? Our line of custom performance skiffs can be tailored to meet your unique boating needs. Visit our facility in Stewart, Florida and turn your boating dreams into reality. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago, and the dreams just keep getting better. In today's boating world, there's a lot of gadgets and features that you can add to a boat, and there's so much technology that you can use in a boat. But with that said, there's also something really beautiful about the simplicity in a boat that's got everything you need on it and not a lot of fancy stuff that you don't. Today we meet up with Josh Whitaker for a look at his Offshore 22, which is a great example of how sometimes simplicity and functionality are the perfect ingredients for your dream boat. My uncle bought this boat um, around when I was born uh, in 1989. Uh, so he's owned it since it was brand new. Uh, he ran it for a long time, and I'd say in the mid-2000s, it needed to be rebuilt, you know, with the wood stringers and wood floor had rotten. And uh, so he had it rebuilt. That didn't work out so well, and, and it, it needed to be rebuilt a second time after that. So it sat there for years, uh, just, just the hull, no stringers, no floor or anything. So I, I approached him about, hey, can I keep this boat in the family and get it rebuilt? And, and uh, he, he liked the idea, so we went ahead with it and bought the boat for five grand. And I uh, started to work on the rebuild and all that entailed with that. And so it, it came with a lot of things though. The boat, you know, he had the tower already. He had you know, the console, which we modified a lot uh, in the live well. Then the porter bracket as well. That's a big, big deal. Uh, so we got a pretty good deal on the boat and then uh, took it to a a shop to have the stringers, the floor, and the paint done inside and out. And then from there, we completely rigged it. But when it came to, to building and, and putting all the electrical in the boat, um, you know, I, I bought a CNC machine to be able to, to make um, perfect parts with it. Uh, so making hatches and making um, uh, switch panels and stuff like that. I was able to save a tremendous amount by just buying material and building it myself. You know, I wanted a really simple layout. Uh, I love to fish, 
but uh, you know, my three and five year old uh, liked to do the sandbar thing. So we needed a boat that was versatile. You know, once we, we started planning it out and literally just drawing it on, on paper. Josh's mechanical engineering background really came in handy when it came time to decide how he was gonna lay out this offshore 22. So we ended up extending the console quite a bit upwards for the GPS. And second, so that it, when bad weather hit, I had something to hide behind. That was definitely the biggest modification I made uh, with the boat myself. I, I actually made the mold, uh, laid up the fiberglass, fared it in, and, and had it painted after that. Uh, so the tower uh, is a, a really, really nice tower. We, we know the gentleman that welds the aluminum, uh, so he was able to, to make this. This was actually, you know, came with the boat when I bought it, but uh, he made it specifically for this boat and console, so everything's perfect on it. It folds down. Uh, you, you can see anything you want from up there. You're, you're so high up uh, and can drive from up there that it's really a perfect uh, a perch to sit on uh, when you're when you're sight casting or, or just sight trying to find fish on the beach whatever you need to do it's it's really perfect uh, spot to do that from we moved the the console and the tower forward about six to eight inches uh, to try to get the ride better on the boat it kind of sat a little uh, a little back heavy uh, so we, we moved that forward that that helped tremendously with the ride with my background and and just being around boats my whole life we were able to put something together that that we're really happy with. And, uh, you know, basically when we decided to, to go with the, uh, the four stroke was because we had gotten out to the sandbar and uh, the boat would not go into reverse anymore. Uh, we went ahead and pulled the trigger on the, the brand new Suzuki uh, 175. Uh, I jumped from the 150 to the 175 because of the vari variable valve timing. It, it just gives the boat so much more uh, torque on the low end. Uh, to get it up on plane and then uh, we're running at about 4,000 rpm getting about four miles per gallon so that that's a, a big thing it really changed the boat you know we were we were happy with the boat when we had the two stroke but now that we have the four stroke it's so nice and easy and simple to take out with the family and then maintain we're, we're very pleased with that so my everyday use with the boat is right now in the, the, the point of my life that I'm in is really just hopping sandbars uh, and maybe going to grab some lunch. Uh, like I said, I have a three and a five year old and, and my wife. And so we, we use the boat uh, primarily as just a family boat now. Uh, I grew up fishing and I love fishing. So I, I still want to do that type of stuff uh, and chase tarpon out on the beach. Uh, but uh, right now, we're, we're mainly sandbar hoppers, and we'll get into the fishing later. With his project complete and the boat water ready, Josh was now able to share with his own children the experiences he enjoyed on the water when he was a kid. After an initial investment of $5,000 and spending $20,000 on repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Josh's dream boat comes to a total of $25,000. When we return, the team at Wildfire Marine demonstrates how to properly repair damaged gel coat. This segment brought to you by Surehold, clean and simple. The ultimate bucket list. Let's start with an ergonomic corrosion-free rope handle. Check. You want a caddy to organize your supplies and lift them out with ease. Check. Add in a bucket grate to elevate wash tools out of dirty water. Check. While you're at it, let's include integrated soap measuring cups. Check. How about a base that won't let your bucket scratch, tip, or slip? Check. Top it off with a secure lid that doubles as a place to sit down. Check and check. The Surehold One Bucket System. For everything on your bucket list, visit OneBucket.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dream Book. Join us as the team at Wildfire Marine performs a proper color matched gel coat repair. Yeah, here at Wildfire, we had a customer that we've done uh, three or four jobs for before. Uh, he's got a 25 foot CV. He called me up and said that uh, when he was working on his trailer, he noticed some hairline cracks and he found a, uh, a, a void area right at the bow. If you find a gel coat void, need to get it replaced uh, because what's going to happen is once the gel coat pops out there's no waterproof protection for the fiberglass uh, it's a repair you have to make when he brought the boat up i went ahead and looked at it and uh, when you tap on it it was solid fiberglass all around it when you tapped on that it was definitely hollow 
Um, first thing I did is I took a pencil and just went ahead and highlighted the cracks a little bit easier. So when I started chiseling, I, I knew exactly where to start and not uh, damage any good fiberglass. When I first started to chisel with the, with the uh, hammer and chisel, I fully expected that first tap was just gonna blow the whole chunk right out. Because usually that's what happens with gel coat. Uh, but when it didn't, and I hit it a few more times, I realized there was, there was a little bit of glass attached. So I had to angle it a little bit deeper. And as soon as I punched it, I got behind that first layer of mat. Uh, and that's where the void was between the first layer of mat and the rest of the fiberglass. It was only three and a quarter, or a three quarter ounce mat, which is very, very thin once it's wetted out. So there's no need to replace it. Once I chipped away the, the large chunk, you could notice that the fiberglass was shiny. Uh, resin wetted fiberglass behind it had never contacted the mat. And so we had to scuff that up, otherwise you wouldn't get good adhesion with the gel coat. So I scuffed that up and also went around the perimeter of the gel coat with the grinder so that I had some, uh, a little bit of blending uh, into the gel coat rather than have a straight cut edge. You need to flare it out pretty good. Once I had the spot all prepared, I went ahead and mixed my gel coat and I mixed my gel coat with a Durotech Clear high gloss additive. But what you do is you mix those, put your hardener in, and then I thicken it with some aerosol. You go ahead and you thicken that to a putty that's uh, something like maybe peanut butter consistency. When I first put the gel coat on, I kind of squeegee it towards the outer edges and make sure I squeeze it in there hard so that if there are still any little gaps, it'll slip in there and, and fill it. So once I got my first coat on, I just sat back and wait for that to dry. It was only two hours later, I could get, go ahead and get my sanding block with some uh, 80 grit paper. And I go ahead and block sand that down. And I go past the repair by at least two, three, four inches on, on all directions. That way I go ahead and get everything nice and level. So I went ahead and mixed my second coat exactly the same way and made sure that the low area that I had was just a little bit heavier than it needed to be. And then once that dried, I went ahead with uh, and sanded that. Now I went down to uh, 180 grit. There was definitely a little bit of tint in his boat. So on my third coat, when I mixed my gel coat, I went ahead and added a little bit of, of mustard to it. And the amount I put in was minuscule. I barely could even see it on the stick when I added to it. Uh, but I went ahead and mixed that and applied that with a squeegee again. So once we got it all, all laid out there the, first, the third time, we went ahead and waited. It looked like it was gonna be a pretty good match. After my third coat dried, I went ahead and, and sanded it very lightly with the uh, with 220. And I could see that everything was, was pretty good. So I went ahead and buffed it which, uh, with a, a 3M compound. It's a high, bit, a high cutting compound. And once we buffed it out, everything looked great. When we return, the experts at Two Rivers Boatworks put their latest TRB custom skiff to the test. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as experts at Two Rivers Boatworks launch their latest TRB Customs creation. So with the Two Rivers Boatworks uh, custom skiff here, I was put in charge of uh, organization and getting this boat all rigged up, ready to roll. And today, you know, we brought it out and kind of tested all the features that we put on the boat to see how, how well it would run. And this thing gets out of the water, I mean, just instantly. Uh, as long as you have your trim right, man, she gets on top and she goes. That uh, jack plate, you can get that motor up just a few more inches and, and really get it on the plane and, and moving at its top speeds. At about full speed, we were topping right at about 40. Cruising at about 3,500 RPMs, she was moving at about 20. And uh, yeah, great cruising boat, rides fantastic. So with the Two Rivers Boat Works custom skiff that we built, we kind of built it out for you know uh, a shallow water fisherman. So we got the 
black trolling motor, which is a freshwater trolling motor that we had to get marinized, uh, get all the parts changed on the inside to stainless steel. That way it can withstand the salt water. And that way it matches the sleek appearance and uh, our dark appearance that we have to give this performance look and keep the style of what we got going on. So for that trolling motor, we put a uh, lithium battery, 12 volt battery, to you know, keep the weight down instead of using a, an AGM or anything else. And uh, definitely has helped with the performance of the boat. And uh, there's also an onboard charger. So whenever you drain that battery, which is gonna take a little while, uh, you can charge that thing right back up. So one of the things that definitely helps out on this boat is instead of one, we decided to go with two of the Power Pole Pro Series 2, uh, six foot. Man, they, let me tell you, wherever you need to go, you put, drop both of them, that boat does not move. It keeps it nice and steady, and it's just perfect, man. So Dell likes the, the dark and sleek appearance, you know, no, no buttons anywhere, everything sleek, and uh, flush mount. So on the TRB Custom, we actually uh, we put a C-Zone unit on this, and that way we don't have any of your switches on the dash. And the only switches that we have on this boat, we actually put a start, stop, and an up down for the jack plate and the motor on a uh, little four by four panel right down here by your feet. The C-Zone is all accessed right through this uh, Simrad. You know, you just click on and you have everything right here. All you gotta do is click what you want on, on, off, that's it. Very simple, very useful without having all the switches in your way. You don't have to worry about anything getting caught on it. Definitely advantage to this boat. So with the side panel here, we put the radio, a voltage meter, the battery switch, and the key switch. That way all of our electronics can fit in there and our wiring's nice and neat back there. Uh, definitely helps out with, with the flush design that we were going for. So with the sound system on here, we put four nine inch Blue Wave uh, speakers in. Um, all four of them have a RGB LED insert and yeah, this for a 16 foot boat, this thing whams. So with the lights, uh, we have under gunnel lights that are actually tied into the same controller as our uh, speaker lights. So those have the same match of color. And then also we have two underwater lights and at night this thing absolutely lights up. Two Rivers, we definitely put our touch on this boat. From bow to stern, you can see that we have custom logos everywhere and our name, you know, just this is our, our design, this is our baby, and uh, you know, it's a pleasure to have out here finally. Next week on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The Bertram 25 project is rigged with brand new outboard power at Coastal Marine. At TRB, Dale and his wife continue forward with restoring and personalizing their Stamus 290 Tarpon. And George Labonte joins Gary Oster aboard his fully renovated and customized Steigercraft.